So it's, it's a great pleasure to be here and to tell you about an unprecedented step. I think it's the first time in history, about January this year, that the European Commission took this giant step for science, but I believe it's for mankind, which is to award about 100 scientists a billion euros over 10 years to simulate the human brain and its diseases. That is the mission. Now, when we won this award, Shimon Perry sent us a, a congratulatory note and he said, and before I tell you what he said, I just tell you that I go around telling people why it's important to understand the brain and you know, we have diseases and there's opportunities for technology and it's extremely important. It's important for society. If we all understand the brain, we should elevate society. It then goes around the world telling people why it's important to we, why it's important to understand the brain. And we have many, many reasons. So Shimon Peres sends a congratulatory note and he says, it's important because we are strangers to ourselves. What can I say? You know, I mean, we spend our life trying to justify why it's important and he just tells you why it's really important. And that's really what the bottom line is. So this was for us an incredible step and an incredible opportunity and a massive responsibility. Now to make this happen, it does require us facing the challenges. How do we do that? What we have to do is we have to build the equivalent of a Hubble Space Telescope that will not stare out into space, but travel and look into the brain, into how it can go wrong. We know that it can go wrong in about 600 different places. Richard is going to tell you about that. We need to be able to travel through the brain in full. And that means we need to be able to simulate it. We need to build a virtual copy, biological copy. We need to embody all the knowledge that we possibly have. And that brings challenge number one, which is we need to do a phase shift in the way that scientists are working today. We're all working in our little corner, on our molecule, on our cell, on our synapses. There's about 100,000 neuroscientists around the world doing that, spending about seven billion per year to do that kind of fragmented research. We have to put it together. We need to work not in collaboration, but as a team. And this is going to be a massive cultural challenge. And if, we, if there's one thing that we can achieve in this 10 years, it's this phase shift in the way that we actually go about this problem. Because it's not going to take one Einstein to understand the brain. It's going to take thousands. And they have to work together. So this for us is challenge number one. Challenge number two is that for years we have studied the brains of animals. But there's the brain of the human brain. And it's unethical to do many, most of the experiments, of course. Which means that the human brain is a black box, largely a black box. So how do we get in there? How do we find out what is in the human brain? in the same way that we can find out what is in animal brains. So we have to learn how to translate the knowledge from animals into humans. Into hum what that really means is that in these 10 years, we will have to tell you exactly what it is in the human brain that makes us human. That's a huge challenge. That will mean that we built an effective translation of our knowledge from animals into humans. That's challenge number two. Challenge number three is actually even more scary, if you wish, for most even scientists. And that is that we could, we could map the brains of animals and do as much as we want in humans for hundreds of years. We can demonstrate and calculate it's impossible to map the brain experimentally. It's not like the Human Genome Project where you have three billion base pairs and you can go through and you can map it. It's not possible. Which means that most of what's in the brain has to be predicted. 
we have to build algorithms that will take a little bit of data, a lot of principles, the most essential principles of the brain, and we have to make a prediction of what is actually inside there. That's challenge number three. The next major challenge is that once we have all these pieces, real data, predicted data, we have to put them all together and simulate them so that we can actually travel through a virtual copy of the brain and look at how emotions are emerging, how in, what is the basis of intelligence, because there's a certain molecule that is more active than in another. Where does it go wrong? And how does the whole brain state just cascade into a schizophrenic state, a depressed state, an anxious state, a psychotic state? These are, uh, require building new infrastructures that don't exist today. We've started, but they don't fully exist, which is massive supercomputers. And that is going to be an, an exciting challenge. We, of course, have to have the challenge of getting to all the medical data, and Richard will talk more about that. And the last challenge, and it's a challenge that's particularly which is, I'm very fond of this challenge, although I see it as a really major challenge, is that we're absolutely committed to making, taking this voyage of the next 10 years to do it with the public. This is not going to be a scientific voyage. This is going to be a voyage where everyone can participate in. And we have programs where the project will be existing in every science museum, and this initiative has actually been led by the Israeli Science Museum. We have programs that is going to allow the public to participate in the project in terms of ethics, in terms of the science of it. And uh, we're very excited because we really believe that the biggest benefit, besides us scientifically telling you how the brain works and where it can go wrong, the biggest benefit is in all of us not becoming strangers to ourselves. So, thank you very much.